the Legion's 10 regiments, three are permanently based outside of France. One detachment is deployed in Mayotte. The 3rd Infantry is based in French Guiana. And the 13th Half Brigade has been stationed in Djibouti since 1982. The regiment consists of 800 men. Djibouti borders Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia and is situated on Africa's Horn by the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, with the Arabian Peninsula on the other side. Previously under French rule, it gained its independence in 1977, but France still maintains a military presence there, along with American and Dutch forces, because it has great strategic importance as it guards the entrance to the Suez Canal, and from here, troops can easily be deployed to any trouble spots in the Middle East or Central Africa. In Djibouti, the Legion has its toughest combat training center, CCAP, which offers perhaps the harshest military training that exists. The instructors and their methods are renowned and feared throughout the world. In Djibouti's hot climate and severe conditions, Legionnaires from all parts of the service train for conflicts in extreme desert situations. In combat, there is no room for failure, and the exercises are designed as intense physical and mental challenges. Faut s'accrocher avec les bras, pousser avec les jambes, et puis et puis on arrive en haut. Allez, laisse toi Non. Allez, repose-toi. Ok. All the training is watched over by one man, the legendary adjutant chef, Marignac. Regarde, tes pieds, écoute, écoute-moi là. Tes pieds, comme t'as du mal, t'as la hache complète, d'accord Voilà, à l'intérieur. Tu les bloques à l'intérieur. Oh, c'est bon, allez, quand c'est bon, allez. Descends. Allez, laisse-toi aller. C'est bon, tu descends. Tu descends par le, la corde, là, et tu rejoins le groupe au saut de Tarzan. Allez, c'est parti. Parce que là, c'est pas évident, hein. il faut être allongé sur la tyrolienne, laisser pendre une jambe naturellement, et un, jour, et un genou replier sur soi-même. Tu laisses ta jambe pendre naturellement, en avant, et tu déroules. Tu déroules, tu déroules, tu déroules, tu déroules, tu déroules, tu déroules. Serre pas bien ta jambe. Voilà. Pourquoi Parce que le parcours, si tu sers que de tes bras, à la fin, tu es sec. Hein. Donc il faut utiliser beaucoup les jambes hein, pour conserver les bras intacts. D'accord Voilà. Mais enfin, toi, tu pas de problème, tu as les bras. Hein Tu les bras, toi Non. Bon, il y a les bras. Allez, vas-y Vas-y, vas-y, vas-y Et plus rapide, c'est rapide, ça En plus, c'est une tyrolienne qui descend légèrement. Hein. Voilà. Allez, tire sur les bras et sur la jambe arrière, tu pousses avec ta jambe arrière et tu tires avec les bras. Tu pousses avec, avec la jambe arrière, tu tires avec les bras. Tire sur ta jambe arrière et arrête de faire la grimace là. Voilà. Regarde, t'as vu ton camarade derrière, il t'a rattrapé là. Oh Réfléchis pas Là, il n'y a rien à réfléchir Là, c'est en avant Hé, hey, laisse pas de ta jambe Laisse pas Et voilà Regardez Regardez tous C'est typique de quelqu'un qui n'écoute pas son instructeur Laisse pendre ta putain de jambe Laisse pendre ta jambe, là Laisse la pendre Voilà Et maintenant, tu viens Allez, tire sur les bras et sur les jambes, euh, arrière. Laisse pendre ta, pu ta putain de jambe, laisse la pendre, là. Laisse la pendre naturellement, là. Voilà, et là, tu, tu, tu tombes pas, là. Ah là, là il tombe. Deux fois, c'est bon. Voilà, correct. Rétablissement. Laisse pas ta jambe. Voilà, regarde, t'es tordu, là. Et tu marches comme un crabe, là. Il faut être droit sur la tu T'as vu T'es tordu, là. 
C'est bon, mais c'est rien ça. Allez, regarde. Allez, vas-y. Vas But today, not everyone is doing the hardcore training. For one man, it's back to more basic duties and a chance to reflect on his reasons for joining the Legion. I come to the Legion because I like normal. I'm not a very, uh, I'm a bit misbehaved in the past. I'm 22. I'm from South Wales in our Great Britain. And right now I'm in Djibouti in North Africa. I come here. Because I, I got into a little bit of trouble with the police back in Great Britain. Uh, because of my criminal record, I can't get a lot of work and a lot of good jobs, things like fire service, police, ambulance, army, I can't do because of my criminal record. So I get uh, the work I do back in civil life is, is pretty crap. And now all the things that I come here to avoid doing, I'm doing exactly the same thing here. So. But it's, it's all right, it's an interesting experience. The first, I think the first five months of being in the Legion was the hardest. It was totally new way of life to adapt to. I see three different types of people who come to the Legion. It's, there are the people who genuinely need to be here, like me, the people who are in trouble back home, the fly-by-night dreamers, the people who think they're going to be commandos, and uh, the complete fucking lunatics, and they're best avoided. I knew it was going to be challenging because of the because of the language eh? and uh, some of the exercises and the, the like the training here the the terrain is is pretty tough. The first six times I went in a plane, I didn't land in it. I jumped out. Can't do that sort of thing in civilian life. At least I can speak another language, and I suppose this is my ticket to the future. Maybe. In the future, if I go for employment, whether I go back to Britain or I stay in France, maybe they'll put my criminal record to one side and look at what I've done in the Legion. Maybe. There are many reasons for wanting to be a Legionnaire. civil quand j'étais pas militaire la vie là c'était difficile parce que moi je, je, moi je, je viens de brésil je suis brésilien je suis arrivé en france à, à 17 ans avec ma mère et elle, elle se marie avec un, un français et comme elle, elle avait la carte des séjours mais moi je pouvais pas avoir parce que j'ai fait déjà 18 ans et je, je pouvais pas être à habite être là bas Et il fallait que je, je sois à l'école, mais c'était difficile parce que je parlais pas, pas bien français. Et c'est pour ça qu'il n'y avait pas autre moyen, et après je me suis engagé à la Légion. Comme ça, je reste en France avec ma mère, et je ne retourne pas au Brésil. Parce que là-bas, au Brésil, je ne pouvais, je pouvais pas faire grand-chose. Je n'avais pas de famille là-bas et tout. C'était difficile. C'est pour ça que là, ici, je suis bien. Comme ça, le... Le, le, le mois, chaque mois, on, on touche une solde. La, comment dire la solde Ah, l'argent. Et après, je vois la moitié à ma mère, comme ça, je, je l'aide chez moi, là, à la maison, et moi, l'autre la autre moitié, je, je la garde. Comme ça, tous les deux, tous la, tous les deux on est content. Et c'est tout. Regarde, hé Si tu te mets ainsi, là, où t'étais, là Allez, suivant. Je t'écoute. Je t'écoute. Je t'écoute. Départ. Parti. Parti. Bah ouais, c'est fait deux fois que tu le dis là. Go. En haut, en haut. En haut. Vise. Voilà, allez. Lâche, lâche. Là, la pédale, tu te démerdes maintenant, mon vieux. Démerde-toi là. Ouf, 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 ouf
Il existe des femmes, mais... Il existe des femmes en Roumanie oh, non, non, Je croyais qu'il y avait que Dracula là-bas. Des femmes ou des copines Copine. Copine, oui. Chez moi, en Roumanie. Oh, ouais, bah, euh, des femmes, il y en a aussi ici en ville, non euh, euh, Quoi, sur, sur, les, sur la copine Non, moi je suis célibataire. <rire> Pour l'instant, pour l'instant, je, je pense qu'il y a sortir et c'est tout là. Après, 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 on verra. Donc que ça dans, que, dans quelques, quelques, quelques temps. In the Ivory Coast, the third company of the second foreign infantry regiment has joined the peacekeeping forces. Ali soldier, English, force spéciale de France. Special forces, France. Action. Bien, à partir de l'issue du rassemblement embarquement et début de l'exercice Boli. Grosso modo, quelle est la situation de l'exercice Dans les forces en présence, les FANSI ont renforcé leur dispositif suite à la sortie du processus de crise des FAFN et s'apprêtent à rentrer euh, à travers la zone de confiance pour aller mater un début de rébellion FAFN. After regaining its independence from France in 1960, the Ivory Coast was ruled by Félix Oufoué Boigny for 33 years. His time was one of growing prosperity and political stability for the country. But after his death in 1993, the nation slowly descended into chaos, with several military coups destabilizing an increasingly lawless country. Civil war broke out in the autumn of 2002, and French forces were sent in the same year. The war ended in 2005, but France has kept peacekeeping forces in the country, as tension remains high. Every village has a leader, and Rio's job is to sensitively gather information and quickly quell any fears. Tu pas de problème Pourquoi tu es venu ici C'est chez moi ici, c'est pas où il faut aller. Non mais ici, tu avais de la famille ici Oui, j'ai ma famille ici, tout, tout, tout est ici. D'accord. Il m'a demandé s'il y a la paix ici, je l'ai dit oui, et que si éventuellement. Euh, Le gouvernement a démissionné, qu'est-ce que ça nous dit Moi je leur ai dit que bon, on continue toujours sur eux et il faut qu'ils s'entendent afin que la paix revienne en Côte d'Ivoire. Que nous sommes fatigués de subir l'effet de la guerre. Back at camp, Mazouz is on kitchen duty, preparing the evening meal. These moments of downtime are rare for a legionnaire, but a constant watch must be kept. A soldier will never know what his next move might be, and capture is always in imminent danger in a country renowned for hostage-taking during its civil war. But it's in these more reflective moments that friendships are forged that will serve them well in the heat of battle. The life of a legionnaire can be lonely, but whatever his past circumstances, he has the chance to start again, begin a new life. Today's legionnaire not only fights on the battlefield, but also fights for the hearts and minds of the people he's been entrusted to protect, bringing hope where there was despair. And for some legionnaires, there's a chance for their own salvation. Yeah. 
Hello, my old man. It's just your ginger and iron brat, you, call, you know, his son. Hope you're okay and the kids are fine. I'm okay, but a little stress with all the constant work. My dad, he never wanted me to come. And then uh, I spoke to him, I told him why I wanted to come here. Because I've not got, obviously, people in the Legion, they don't come here because their life's great. They've come here because they've done something in the past or they've not got the best history in the world. And I was uh, a bit of an idiot when I was young. And uh, I explained to him why I wanted to come here and he, he agreed with me. He said, give it a go. And uh, I've come here and now he's proud of me. He's really, really proud of me, my dad and uh, my brother and all that. Hope you're okay and the kids are fine. I'm okay, but a little stress with all the constant work. You never get a rest always on the go and on guard, but it's not too bad because I finish in three weeks and then I'll get some leave. I don't mind following the orders. I chose to come here. It's, uh, I chose to be the soldier here. Everything, everything they tell me to do, it's my decision. I chose to come here. You're a volunteer in the Legion and that's uh, what they drill into your head all the time. But sometimes, you know, it's a job like any other and uh, sometimes you get told to things you don't want to do. And uh, that's, uh, that annoys you and that can really, because sometimes it's really, the guys that are telling you what to do are idiots, and uh, to, to be honest with you, and they give you some stupid orders, and that can that's hard. The good things are you learn another language, you, you travel the world for free, uh, you know, you see places even if they're like war countries, you see places that you'd never get to see in your life, and uh, it opened that kind of thing opens your eyes. It's hot as fuck today, and bright red, I look like a lobster. And I've, and I've lost a, a load of weight because I can't do much sport. But it's okay, because uh, I'll get it back when I finish with it. For the first six or seven months, it was very hard. It's, uh, what, I did what I go. For the first, I wanted to desert, I wanted to go home. I just couldn't. It was just hard work, stress, just stressing it every day. You get you up at like four o'clock in the morning, or three o'clock in the morning when you've only had like two hours sleep because you've been on guard duty. Uh, it made me go through ice cold rivers at uh, three o'clock in the morning, so that wasn't nice. But it, it was character building. We was training yesterday, we went on an helicopter and I took a few pictures, I'll send them you when I get back. Well, Africa's shit, I don't like it much. The people are lazy as fuck and that's why it's so fucked up. It always will be, but I don't give a shit. It's just the kids I feel sorry for. Glory, glory, man United! Glory, glory, man United! Glory, glory, man United! On the Red go marching! On, on, on! Anyway, I don't want to depress you, so whenever you feel down and you think life's pointless going on, just remember I've got a ginger head and can't get a fuck, and it's all your fault, but don't worry, I'm a strong lad, I can take it. Là c'était la chambre à Foster et là c'était sa lit, c'était son corps à lui et là c'était son armoire, maintenant il est pris, il avait ça à faire un, un tout cas pour moi à bon qu'il dessert. voilà il habite avec moi et il est un bon mec il est... bon je sais pas pourquoi il a fait ça Anyway I'm off, so take care, love John <laughs> Me I don't care, this first weekend to get back I'm gonna get pissed out me head First Class Legionnaire Foster decided to leave the Legion after three years of service. As a deserter, he will be in danger of imprisonment if caught in France. And he has lost the respect of his fellow Legionnaires forever. Christmas time is a very special occasion for the family that is the Legion. But perhaps the most intense intercompany rivalry is to establish the company that can construct the finest Christmas crib. Donc on est d'affaires. 
Donc c'est ici. La crèche, c'est ici. Adjutant Robenheimer and his platoon have been chosen to represent the third company in this year's Christmas crib competition. These traditions to the outsider may seem insignificant, but within the Legion and amongst the soldiers, these customs carry great weight and responsibility. I'm explaining the work that needs to be done for the crib um, and what we're going to build here. This man is going to be the priest who is actually going to be present in the crib. Adjutant Robenheimer went to an English boarding school. Good preparation for the rigors of army life. While his parents wanted him to go to Oxford or Cambridge, he secretly dreamt of becoming a legionnaire. He has achieved the highest rank possible for an NCO, commanding 4th platoon, and now he's coming to the end of his time with the army. Captain Kutanze is commanding the 3rd company of the 2nd Foreign Infantry Regiment. He's put his faith in Robenheimer to win the Christmas crib competition. So this morning the, the general uh, commanding the Foreign Legion is going to come in the, in the company for, for, for have a look of the preparation of the quich and uh, other works for, Noel, for Christmas. Robenheimer has an ambitious design for his crib, and the whole venture must be planned like a military campaign if he's to succeed. And a waste of time. Wasting time, losing time. In his 20 years as a legionnaire, Robenheimer has never won the contest. Could it be, in his last year as a serving soldier, that he could eventually realize this long-held ambition? But things have not begun well. He's very far behind on an already tight schedule. We need some, some equipment to, to finish the crash properly. And so I'm going to go out and buy what we need for the, for the crash. I left England pretty much after school, so I preferred the idea of joining the Legion of the British Army. The Legion, at the time, was a lot more attractive than the British Army. Because at the time when I joined, we were still in the Cold War, um, and the British Army was Germany and Northern Ireland, neither of which were particularly interesting. And the Legion was in Africa and running around doing all sorts of interesting things. In Djibouti, in Africa, the Legion has its toughest combat training center, CCAP, which offers perhaps the harshest military training that exists. The instructors and their methods are renowned and feared throughout the world. Snipers work in pairs, often drop behind enemy lines. They are the eyes and ears of a detachment. A fully trained sniper can take out a target from over two kilometers away. We are specialized like a sniper training. So we are for three, four days uh, on the field and everything we need, it's in our sack. We don't change clothes, everything. Because it's very important to be at strictly necessary. Battez la main. Dès que t'as en position, c'est bon. OK. Tu utilises tout le vote. Niet, tranquille, fluide, suis, OK. Deuxième chose. Dès qu'il vous tirez, changement de position tout de suite. Send two people out there. <coughs> you give them a map, some coordinates, and they go out there. They take every information, and they can take out this if it needs someone, or, or maybe they can uh, coordinate um, an air attack or a field attack. No problem. For that, this is the most one of the most important thing what the army has. Changement de position. Restez pas là-bas. Si vous tirez, c'est quelqu'un qui vous voit là. Tir de deux comptes. Cinq, quatre, deux, un. They must be slow and graceful. Any sudden movement can alert the enemy and lead to instant discovery and almost certain death. 
Because of his Legion training, after he leaves the army, a sniper can command rich contract as a covert operator in the murky world of the hired mercenary. Robenheimer's army of helpers are working around the clock to try to save the company's entry into this year's crib competition. The Legion tradition of doing crashes is just, it's a Legion tradition amongst all the others. Um, and like all our traditions, needs to be respected. Because when you lose one, you start losing the rest. Um, and it's very difficult to pinpoint which of the traditions are important and which of the traditions are a waste of time. And I think we've already lost some traditions and that hasn't done us a lot of good. Um, the, the Legion evolves with the world it's living in. Um, and the world that we live in is a very individualistic world where everyone is allowed to do whatever they want and be responsible for nothing. Um, and the Legion is nothing to do with that. The Legion is about everyone is responsible for everyone else and no one is allowed to do what they want. Everyone must do what they're supposed to do, which is completely in contradiction with the world today, today's moral values in the Western world. And so the traditions that we have um, help us to keep some of those moral values. What is a man searching for when he enlists in the French Foreign Legion? Sanctuary? Brotherhood. Identity. Djibouti in Africa, the Legion has its toughest combat training center, CCAP. Armies from all over the world use this renowned facility. <laughs> Captain Alio, the leader of the CCAP combat training center in Djibouti, keeps a watchful eye over its combatants. On se retrouve tout de suite après le rassemblement dans le faré. This is the ultimate examination for any soldier. Okay, mettez-vous ici face à moi. On va revoir une dernière fois le schéma du principe ce matin du travail de l'exercice parcours de tir réel de ce matin. Les farets, plage des Italiens, le champ de tir. Premier temps, les trois bateaux seront ici. Se mettre en appui ici, face ici. Pas de questions. It is in this exercise that the Legionnaire will be tested on all the drills and maneuvers he's practiced in the three weeks of his combat training. For the last 21 days under the leadership of Captain Alio, the men have practiced shooting for cover and managing their ammunition. Firstly, they will demonstrate they've learned how to shoot safely and correctly from a boat. This is the ultimate examination for any soldier. Now, under pressure, they must keep their heads cool. Well, on a la première phase de, de la manip, hein, on, de l'exercice. En fait, on est en attente au large. On a un groupe qui est parti se mettre en bateau en appui. On attend son compte rendu pour savoir s'il a décelé de l'ennemi ou non. Et s'il a décelé de l'ennemi, on va, on va continuer notre reconnaissance en engageant éventuellement le combat. C'est à moi d'assister. J'adore ça. 
Look, the sea, the sun, military, the famous, beautiful life. <laughs> sure. Disposition de combat pour tout le monde. Ok, après la route, on va aussi la prise en place. Attention, Thomas. coup par coup, distance environ 200 mètres. Il y a des, euh, deux, donc, deux autres jacks qui vont arriver par la plage. Effectif euh, une, une, une section. Débarquer sur la plage, prendre la, prendre la plage d'assaut. Two Zodiac boats attack the enemy beach. Using live ammunition, the group on the hill will act as backup and give covering fire as the sections disembark. Les quatre cibles au bord de la plage, vous ne tirez pas jusqu'à moi dans les ordres. They will have to implement correctly, with great speed and fluency, all the skills that they've been taught. In combat, there is no room for failure, and the exercises are designed as intense physical and mental challenges. Une fois que l'assaut est fini, fouille de zone. Ensuite, rembarquement dans le Zodiac. Et au moment où ils embarquent, les, euh, les, les gens qui sont ici appuient l'embarquement le, euh, de la section. Voilà, c'est quelque chose de simple, rapide, efficace. On appuie chef, on décroche, premier groupe Tout le monde appuie Ça tire After the attack is finished, they must re-embark using smoke grenade screens as cover and advancing in combat in a synchronized way whilst remembering to keep in their line formations. Objectif dans le premier rideau fumigène. Allez, premier et d'autres premier en place. Attendez le deuxième. Finissez, finissez le chargeur qui était prévu là. On se maintient à 50%. Levez les chargeurs, pour sécurité. Ok, coupe le moteur. C'était bien, mais il y a deux choses qui me gênent. Pourquoi on jette des fumigènes Pourquoi Pour pouvoir partir en étant caché. Alors si vous ne jetez pas la fumigène devant vous, et que vous n'attendez pas qu'il y ait de la fumée, regardez, regardez, on a le temps. Il faut attendre qu'il y ait de la fumée, et après on part. Si vous jetez et vous partez, l'ennemi vous tire. Donc il ne faut pas être pressé. On jette le fumigène à 10 mètres, on attend que ça fume bien. À un moment donné, vous avez vu, il y avait un trou. Il y en a un qui n'a pas jeté devant lui. Ok, le sergent, il est obligé d'en jeter un autre. Ça, c'est pas bon. Ok, combien il reste de fumigène Il reste combien en tout 1, 1, 2, 0. Les munitions, c'est bon Vous avez géré Ok, écoutez-moi bien. Écoutez-moi bien. Je donne l'ordre à tout le monde, quand on est presque arrivé à la plage, de tirer toutes les munitions. Toutes les munitions.
Robenheimer is also on a mission. That's going to be for the sunset. Good lighting works, bad lighting is a disaster. Even with the general due to inspect the unfinished crib and the possibility that they might not be able to proceed, Robenheimer can see light at the end of the tunnel. Lieutenant Ryu is also making festive plans. This is his fourth Christmas as platoon leader, having joined the Legion direct from France's prestigious military academy, Saint Cyr. For the next week, we have three main uh, activities. First, the crib. Uh, secondly, the, um, the sketch for the Christmas night. And uh, finally, the um, Christmas uh, platoon bar. I'm busy now. Moi j'étais chez moi, je fais je fais l'armée chez moi et j'avais envie de rester. Il n'y avait pas de place. Alors, et un jour j'étais à internet, tac, et je ne sais pas pourquoi, il est venu dans ma tête les mots les gens étrangères. Même pas qu'est-ce que c'est passeport. Et là j'étais là-bas et... et voilà, c'est deux ans, deux ans, trois mois je suis là. Enfin, on ne sait pas si on a des soldats ou si on a des... Si on est dans une école en train de faire des maquettes, quoi, un truc de fou. Moi, je préférais bien être sur le terrain là en train de faire d'entraînement, quoi, et pas... Pas ici en train de faire des maquettes, quoi. Captain Coutance is in charge of discipline, so it's a nervous wait for three legionnaires outside the captain's office. One waits for promotion, but is his French good enough? A legionnaire must learn to speak French from the moment he enlists. Otherwise, he's severely dealt with. The legion protects its own. They will give you a new identity if that helps you break with the past, and if you prove yourself. You can then apply to have your real name back. Legionnaire de première cause automatique, un six mois de service. Troisième compagnie, section de l'ultime envoyé, fonction, pilote VAP, à vos hommes, mon capitaine. Parce que bientôt j'ai joué à un stage caporal. Il m'a dit ça. Bon, notamment, il y a eu un, il a dit justement, enfin, un problème médical à la compagnie, d'accord Donc, ton tour de CE avance. C'est mon niveau de français, c'est pour moi, ça pour, 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 pour suffit, mon capitaine. Je parle français, un peu. Je peux expliquer mon problème, oui, je sais bien. Tu fais, me donne mon nom, la vraie, la vraie nom, le nom de CV. Donc tu vas lire consciencieusement ton papier, d'accord De toute façon, à ce que ton, ton nom ne soit pas écorché pendant un an. Tu lis, d'accord Tu vérifies l'orthographe. On va donner les noms, c'est tout. Je vais signer un papier et c'est bon. Oui, d'accord. The third legionnaire wants permission to buy a car. Sergeant Mitishnikovs, 5 ans, 3 mois de service, 6 mois de gras, 3ème compagnie, 6 chars de l'Union Rio, fonction, chef de groupe, Azo Moïtel. Mais trop beau. Je m'appelle pas Azo Moïtel. In the Legion, for the first 5 years of service, a soldier cannot buy a car, a mobile phone, or even get married without permission from his commanding officer. For a platoon leader to lose one of his soldiers dampens the Christmas spirit. For any family to lose one of its sons is a tragedy. To desert from the Legion is failure and breaks the bond of brotherhood that makes the Legion strong. So when we have, uh, when, one, when one legionnaire flee, we have to write a paper like uh, this with uh, different information about uh, him, because uh, this night one of my legionnaires flee. So I have uh, to do this paper now. The Legion consists of so many young men from so many different cultures and countries. 
Their reasons for coming as myriad as their reasons for staying. All have left their old family behind to join the Legion. What binds the Legion together is its codes and customs. It's these rituals that unites the family of the Legion. General Pichot de Champfleury is simply the father of the Legion. This will be his 15th year spent amongst his soldiers, but his first as a general in charge. In the Legion, a general is allowed to serve only three years. But in his short tenure, he will look to encourage and support his sons, the Legionnaires. The, the general commanding the Foreign Legion is used to coming into all regiments, uh, all Legion regiments, uh, about uh, twice or three, four times in a year. La visite du général qui commande la Légion pour Noël, pour les légionnaires, c'est le père de famille qui vient voir un peu ses, ses enfants. Je viens pas pour les voir travailler, euh, ça j'ai d'autres occasions dans l'année pour le faire. Je viens simplement pour leur dire, je suis avec vous, au milieu de vous, et on va tous faire Noël ensemble. C'est la mise en condition pour passer des super fêtes de Noël et une super soirée de Noël tous ensemble. Ouais, donc vous êtes rentré mardi, donc ça fait deux jours que vous êtes là. Voilà, et depuis deux jours, jours tout le monde travaille. Et vous avez déjà lancé tout ça, quoi. Oui. Et vous allez travailler toute la journée, probablement un peu pendant la nuit. Ouais. With the general's inspection underway and all the other platoon cribs near completion, Robenheimer still has nothing to show for all his efforts. Not good. Not good. Too much work. Not enough men. Too much work, not enough men. A nightmare. Everything is under control. <laughs> the Legion march at 88 paces per minute, rather than the usual 120. This has been a strong Legion tradition throughout the ages. While the general is enjoying the Christmas crib presentations from the other companies, Robenheimer is not yet nearly ready. Daniel, tu consignes, tu réalises des centontes, avec tes gros doigts et tes gros bras, tu fais des centontes aussi fins. De Saint Joseph, je suis assez impressionné. Attends, va me le chercher là, on va voir. Montre à moi. Et il y a combien de personnages dans ta crèche Tu vas en faire combien des centons euh, Trois rois mages, mm -hmm. Gaspard, Mac, euh, mm -hmm. Macœur et Balthazar, mm -hmm. Joseph, Vierge Marie bien sûr, et mm -hmm. petit Jésus, et puis mm -hmm. on, va, on, on, va, on va voir combien ça me reste là encore à Argile. Tu es de quelle nationalité Je suis polonais. Oui. polonais. <rire> C'est du chocolat. <rire> Bravo, mais... Le plus important, c'est le moment où on fait la crèche, parce que c'est l'idée où, où c'est le moment où l'idée jaillit, c'est la cohésion de, de toute l'équipe, de toute la section pour monter tout ça, c'est les différents talents qui se conjuguent pour sortir un projet final abouti, c'est ça. Qui est... Est vrai, non, mais est, euh, à la nuite quand elle est faite, en fait, c'est génial de regarder. Ouais, ouais, ah, on va aller voir la, les projets de la première. Captain Guéry, commandant la première compagnie, à aux en Bonjour. Mais devant. Là, il euh, y a eu des combats là. Hein. Y a les, les études munitions qui, qui sont ouvertes, il y a un bidon qui a explosé. Et toi, tu as déjà fait des crèches C'est la première fois. D'accord. Ça te plaît Tu fais quoi dans la crèche, toi tu, fais... tu as compris ma question Qu'est-ce que tu as préparé pour la crèche 
les arbres, le... Oui. oui. Je dis oui pour me faire plaisir. <rire> Toi, tu as fait quoi dans la crèche Toi, quoi Tu as fait quoi J'ai fait là-bas. Là-bas oui. Ça euh, Non. Là-bas, le sol. D'accord, le sol. D'accord. Allez, ben je te souhaite bonne chance. Et l'année prochaine, tu parleras un peu mieux français, hein, sinon... Oui, mon général. Tu ne seras pas capable. <rire> ok. Allez, c'est parti. On y va. Joyeux Noël <rire> Christmas is stressful for all families, including Robenheimer's family of men working flat out to be ready for the competition. Mon impression, c'est je suis toujours émerveillé par la quantité d'amour et d'énergie qu'ils mettent dans l'élaboration des crèches. Euh, ils ont une imagination, ils ont un souci du détail. C'est des... Moi, je suis toujours éberlué. Euh, des années après, je ne me lasse pas d'aller voir leurs crèches et surtout de me faire expliquer comment les idées leur en sont venues et qu'est-ce que ça rappelle chez eux dans leur vie antérieure. Euh... The general is due at any moment and could possibly close the whole operation down if Robenheimer cannot persuade him that his crib will be completed by Christmas Eve. Allez, en cours de création. En cours de création. Alors, elle va ressembler à quoi là Je vois des avions, je vois des, des VAB. Alors, le, le thème, c'est la. Enfin, ça s'intitule la dernière prière. La dernière prière. La dernière avant prière. quoi euh, Avant le, l'extinction de la vie d'un vieux pape rémissionnaire de l'Afrique euh, et qui va remémorer un peu certains événements où les légionnaires sont venus. Donc là, on aura un petit tableau. Euh, Opération euh, Taco. Ouais. Euh, ici, il y aura l'opération Pelican. Ouais. Euh, et puis euh, l'opération euh, euh, en Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire. Je sais qu'il y a eu l'idée. C'est euh, mon idée. D'accord. Et eux, ils réalisent. Ils sont, et ils sont des ouvriers qui, euh, ouais. qui bossent comme des malades. Ouais. Et le parler, c'est... Euh... Il faut, vous savez qu'il faut qu'elle soit prête pour le 24 quand même. Hein c'est... <rire> On va avancer jusqu'à minuit, je pense. <rire> okay. Allez, ben c'est bon. Ben, courage et puis continuez. Si je ne m'inquiète pas pour le 24, mais je ne fais pas, pas d'illusion sur leurs horaires. Ouais. Ouais. Vous allez faire 35 heures en deux jours, quoi, c'est ça Je pense, oui. Voilà, c'est je bien. D'accord. Allez, je vous souhaite bonne chance. Merci. Hein. Joyeux Noël à l'avance de la part du général qui commande la ville. Salut. Allez, au revoir et bonne chance. Merci. Ah oui. This crash is uh, coming on, but we are now the 22nd and it's got to be finished in 48 hours. The Djibouti Obstacle Course has prepared the company for skirmishes in Somalia and Rwanda. Lessons learned here will be invaluable to the serving soldier who finds himself in the midst of conflict. Today we are going to finish the group. 
ici et il faut qu'on fasse euh, tout le monde ensemble, groupé. Parce qu'ici on essaye de faire individuel, euh, ça ne marche pas. C'est euh, trop difficile. J'ai déjà essayé, ça n'a pas marché. Y a-t-il des blessés depuis ce matin Des gens qui sont blessés depuis ce matin Non 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 Ok. The team have to complete the course in less than an hour. In daytime, with an instructor, the task is grueling enough. But a true legionnaire must be able to complete the course at night, under a blanket of impenetrable darkness, forbidden to communicate with anyone. In this situation, the task is treacherous. Mettez-vous plus à droite, plus à droite. The course tests the legionnaire's ability to work together, to call on unknown reserves of strength. Vous avez compris? Un qui monte sur l'épaule, il garde les poignets, comme ça il peut pousser parce qu'en même temps on tire et il pousse. Allez, je te, je te monte. Tu passes les sauts par le. Allez. In a timed test over a similar course in French Guiana. A legionnaire unit took 45 minutes to complete the test, whereas the U.S. Marines took seven hours. The record is 32 minutes. These legionnaires of the 13th Half Brigade in Djibouti owe their brave reputation as a notable fighting force to the legionnaires of 1940. In Norway, the regiment battled through freezing temperatures to turn the tide of the Second World War. Norway, with its long Atlantic coast, was considered a zone of destiny by Hitler. And the city of Narvik was in particular of strategic importance, as German munitions factories were dependent on Swedish iron ore shipped from the port. The 13th Half Brigade was deployed by France to help take back the city. It was to be the first direct land confrontation between the Allies and the Nazis. While the British Navy gave covering fire, the 13th Half Brigade landed at Bjerkvik, just outside of Narvik. They moved toward the city together with a battalion of Norwegian Defence Forces. In one of the most heroic moments of the Half Brigade's history, they drove the Germans out of Narvik and towards the Swedish border. Les bombes tombent sur la ville. Le pire est à craindre car l'incendie trouve une proie facile avec les maisons de deux étages. But news that Hitler had invaded France caused the immediate withdrawal of the legion and the momentum was lost. However, such damage had been done to the German forces that Hitler's plans to invade Britain had to be halted. Also without the supply of Swedish iron ore, German war production was set back. Although Hitler regained control of Narvik in the end, the bravery of the legionnaires of the 13th Half Brigade is still remembered today with awe and admiration. It's the morning of Christmas Eve and the final fateful day of the crib competition. For most legionnaires, it's the breaking of a new day. But for first class legionnaire Moreira, it's the closing of a very long night. C'est pas le top, quoi. Tu travailles? Non, non, non. J'étais en ville. For the first five years of service, legionnaires must live in dorms in the confines of their barracks. It can make it very difficult to have a normal social life. Good morning. I'm not of the morning. <laughs> Pas avant 7 heures, pas avant 7 heures. Après le premier café, bien sûr.
Legionnaires are allowed to leave the regiments if they're not on duty. Il faut être militaire, mais il faut être civil en même temps. Sinon, ça ne marche pas trop. Là. Après, on devient trop, trop dur dans la tête. Ce n'est pas bien. Ce n'est pas ça que je veux, là, tous les temps. J'ai envie bien d'avoir une famille là, aussi. C'est bon. Si on est 100% militaire, là, après, ça ne marche pas. Robenheimer studies the panel of distinguished judges. He hopes to impress them with his crib by portraying past missions in Chad, Congo and the Ivory Coast. Now, if we've done something that's completely different, that's great, because that will grab their attention and they'll think, wow, it's great. Uh, if they're completely bored and we do another thing, they've already seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven others the same, they'll just go, hmm. So, um, we can take a look at what's been done so far, and we should now be almost ready. Crash, troisième company, section d'appui. And here, there is still work going on, because the VAB is not working terribly well. The VAB is the um, centerpiece, it's the grand finale of, the, of that crash. This is the soundtrack that I spent all afternoon and all night yesterday making. It, that, this, this part works. It's, uh, the sound is nice, we've got the volume sort of down, we've got an acceptable sound system. The problem is just getting that fab to work properly. Robenheimer is having to rely on two young German recruits for the successful outcome of his piece de resistance in the competition. What? He's hoping that the renowned Teutonic methodical and mechanical expertise will save the day. For observers, the Christmas crib competition may seem superficial, but for Robenheimer, it gives him a chance to leave a mark, the merest dimple in the sand of time that is the history of the Legion. 38 and 19 and a half years in the Legion is quite old. I'll be 39 when I leave. I'll still be young. Even if there were English speakers in my platoon, I would still speak French to them. The Slovak is in my section as well. He also has a very poor level in French, and he prefers to speak with Slovakian uh, friends and then try and mix with someone. I mean, he could, if he spoke to a Chinese man, that would do fine because they'd obviously have to end up speaking French. So, can speak to anyone he wants. He shouldn't speak to his fellow Slovakians, but he does. Um, so he's well behind on French. And he's not helping himself, and his friends aren't helping him by talking to him in Slovakian. But he doesn't realize that. But that's quite, quite common, actually. The you know, not realizing that they're doing themselves harm by not speaking French. And after a couple of years, they suddenly say, wow. Um, I'm still treated as the dumb idiot, and I don't think I'm a dumb idiot. Why am I, they treating me like a dumb idiot? They're nasty. Uh, that's one solution. Or the other solution is, why are they treating me like a dumb idiot? Well, perhaps because I don't understand the word, the word they're saying. And if I could understand a bit more of what they're saying, they might be treating me a bit more like a, the intelligent human being that I am. It's Christmas Eve, and the day of the final. The doors are open, and the dignitaries are arriving to judge the cribs. All Robenheimer can do is wait and hope and pray. Ils ont rentré dans quelle porte Ici we, Yes, we are, this morning we have chosen the, the white coach, which uh, will of course win the, the competition. All is made with uh, fingers of legionnaires, and this is, uh, for me, it is one of the most important points of uh, the quetch. It must not be a quetch with money. And uh, the, the point of the legionnaires, the quality of the legionnaires, is to add it and to create something from quite nothing.
We have uh, planned something for the women. We have uh, uh, put some handkerchief next to chairs uh, for when they're going to cry. <laughs> Notre Père, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Oui, Seigneur, ta volonté sur cette terre, cette terre africaine, que tu sais combien je l'ai aimée. Même, Seigneur, dans les heures les plus sombres, où tout semblait perdu, tu ne m'as pas abandonné, ni moi, ni tes fidèles. Et même parfois, tu nous as envoyé des gens pour nous sauver, des hommes rudes, des hommes de guerre, mais qui sont venus nous apporter la paix. Quand j'étais au Tchad, après l'indépendance, quand des bandes rebelles venaient s'aimer la terreur et la mort dans le pays, bien des années plus tard, au Congo, là, on se croyait vraiment abandonné de tous. Et pourtant, tout nous a pas oublié. Quand j'ai vu ces légionnaires et leurs avions, je croyais voir un cohorte de tes anges qui venaient du ciel. Au Côte d'Ivoire, juste avant que je vienne me retirer ici, cette guerre civile, si terrible, si meurtrière, les attaques contre les étrangers, qu'ils soient français ou autres, ou simplement l'étranger de l'autre tribu. Là encore, c'était ces braves, ces légionnaires qui sont venus repatrier les uns, séparer les autres, toujours protéger les plus faibles, les plus démunis, face à cette violence, cette haine. Seigneur, bénissez-les. Ces hommes qui viennent toujours pour sauver, comme tu es venu aussi pour nous sauver, tu es venu sur cette terre, tu es devenu homme, en cette nuit de Noël, il y a 2000 ans, tu es venu, Jésus, pour nous sauver de nos péchés. Et tu t'es offerte en sacrifice pour que nous puissions vivre comme ces légionnaires, prêts à l'ultime sacrifice. Merci, mon Dieu. Mon général, mesdames, messieurs, sous-officiers, les corporales et légionnaires de la section à pieux de la 3 compagnie vous souhaitent un joyeux Noël et très bonne année 2007. C'est difficile hein, de choisir. <rire> Everything worked. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Tout à fond. Everything worked like it was supposed to. Now it's up to the jury to decide whether they like what they saw or not. But, uh, the effect that I tried to achieve was achieved. Let's wait and see. As Robenheimer nervously waits, the judges confer. As Christmas Eve slips into Christmas Day, Robenheimer learns that he's finished second in the contest. Through his presentation, he's honored the men that have gone before him and given their lives in the service of the Legion. The Legion is your family and will always be your home. At Christmas time, there is only one place to be for a Legionnaire. King Louis Philippe created the French Foreign Legion in 1831. It was established to protect and expand his colonial empire without the spilling of a drop of pure French blood. 
Men from all over the world have left their pasts behind to start a new life and gain a fresh identity in this notoriously brutal and strict division of the French army. Only a chosen few, the best of the best, are admitted. They face the ultimate physical and mental challenge in a recruitment process that changes them forever as they become brothers in the Legion. They follow in the footsteps of their mythical predecessors who lived and died by the motto, first in, last out. <laughs> the Legion is constantly training for conflict. The third company is taking part in a large exercise with the second foreign infantry regiment. Over two days, they will practice taking out an enemy in two very different scenarios, one in a forest and one in a city. Lieutenant Ryu leads his platoon during the exercise. A French officer, the ambitious Ryu joined the Legion directly from the famed military academy at Saint-Cyr, and he hopes to make captain very soon. These exercises will be a test of his leadership skills. Actuellement, le régiment est en reconnaissance offensive dans la forêt des Palanges. Le régiment donc est aligné. Le point particulier, c'est la coordination. Un entre les compagnies et deux entre les sections, entre les groupes, entre les jeunes. Donc jusqu'au plus bas niveau, en fait, il faut assurer une étanchéité du dispositif, faire dépasser par l'ennemi, qui à ce moment-là pourrait mener à un combat d'imbrication en nous prenant à revers. In the large forests just outside of Rodez. The Legionnaire's mission is to take out an enemy. For the Legionnaires, these exercises are long, lasting up to several days, testing their endurance and focus over an extended period. They may not ever see the enemy, but they must constantly be alert. Pour faire bouger tout un régiment, c'est long. long, long. Donc peut-être qu'il y aura un peu d'action un peu plus haut, mais nous, ça nous concernera pas. Donc, par contre, on se réaligne à chaque fois. Non, c'est long, c'est long. Toute la journée, ça se trouve, il n'y aura rien du tout pour nous. Quoi. Tout va se passer un peu plus haut, un peu plus bas. Donc. On va attendre. Ok, donc euh, je suis sergent Toletti, nationalité française, 35 ans, actuellement sous-officier adjoint à la première section, 3e compagnie, 2e marine. Par loi, la Légion ne peut seulement comprendre des foreigners. Mais un French national peut recruter sous une différente identité et nationalité. Non, mais disons que je me suis engagé à la Légion pour, euh, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure, hein, pour servir une élite. Donc moi j'ai toujours aimé le métier des armes. J'ai été tutoyé, comme on peut dire, l'armée française. Ça m'a plu plus ou moins, je vais pas jeter la pierre à l'armée française, je vais pas cracher dans la soupe. Mais j'ai préféré venir servir à la Légion pour connaître vraiment l'élite. Si t'as du jeu ou t'as pas de jeu, je sais pas. Si t'as confiance. Ma mission à moi c'est de te piquer tes deux allumettes qui te restent. <rire> non, je balance mes cartes. Ah, mais par, contre, par contre si je gagne... C'est moi qui prends les allumettes. Mais non, tu balances les cartes, regarde. Enfin, rien, on n'a pas vu son jeu. Lui, il s'est arrêté là. Moi, ouais, c'était mieux. Ah, mais comment se fait pour voir votre jeu Eh, ben, tu vois pas. Ah, tu vois pas. <rire> for Sergeant Kazan, the thoughts drift towards home, as he recently became a father. Ah oh, ouais, avant Noël, mais donc ma femme, au bout de sept mois de grossesse, a failli d'accoucher. Donc elle est restée pendant un mois allongée avec une semaine d'hôpital et un mois allongé à la maison. Donc, donc elle a passé Noël allongé, donc c'était un peu difficile. Bon, j'ai réussi à être là pour la naissance. Quoi. Donc euh, il est né le 13 février, donc il s'appelle Maxence. Il faisait 3,7 kg pour 51 cm. Donc c'était donc, un beau bébé quand même. Mais bon, je l'ai vu qu'une semaine, parce qu'après on a dû partir sur le terrain. Et j'ai hâte de rentrer justement pour le revoir. Quoi. Ouais, ouais. Moi j'espère que mon fils me le, me le fera pas payer plus tard, comme, comme quoi j'étais pas assez souvent là. Non, ma femme avait très bien compris. Ben, après Noël, je pense à grade. C'était un peu dur, froid, 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 mais ça va, ça passe. Hey Mazou, arrange ta tenue, ferme ta Gore-Tex, parce que ben, en marchant, en marchant. Ok, toi à partir d'ici. Passe par là. Ça, il peut venir que de là, c'est un, un, un sens unique. Okay. 13, 13, ici 11, parmi. Ah. 
In Rodez, in the south of France, four companies of the regiment are going to attack and clear the city. One company will be the enemy providing fierce opposition to the others. It's not an unusual view for the people of the south of France to see soldiers training as they go about their daily business. Sergeant Toletti is in charge of the discipline in Lieutenant Rieu's platoon. He demands from the Legionnaires that they follow the seven points of the Legionnaires' code, which is summed up in the motto, honor and fidelity. Tant que ils sont réglo, nous leur demandons une seule chose. Alors surtout la section, on marche comme ça, on leur demande une seule chose, c'est d'être réglo. C'est pas pas essayer de nous faire des entourloupes, de nous cacher des choses que de toute façon on va savoir. Donc on préfère que ce soit eux directement qui nous disent si par exemple ils ont fait une banane le week-end, une conne comme ça, un jour ou l'autre, on va le savoir. Donc à la section, on marche comme ça. The Legion must be prepared for all kinds of situations. And the exercise in the city of Rodez drills the legionnaires in basic maneuvers for conflict in urban areas, such as riots or terror attacks. Allez putain là on va se faire reculer, reculer, là. sinon on va se faire tirer comme des lapins là tant qu'on peut pas rentrer là. Legionnaires have varied backgrounds. And first class legionnaire Rombe used to work as a model. He understands the realities of war and would be unfazed if asked to fight. Concernant la guerre, beaucoup de gens me, euh, me posent la question justement si il m'arriverait de partir en guerre, qu'est-ce que je ferais La guerre, c'est partout. La guerre, c'est en Afghanistan, en Afrique, en France, même dans où j'habite, à Paris, c'est tous les jours la guerre. Parce que j'habite dans une cité, donc je me dis, soit je prends une balle perdue, je rentre à la maison, je cherche du pain, je rentre à la maison, je pourrais autant prendre une balle que je me bats pour mon pays. Mon pays, c'est la France. Donc si demain, je suis amené à partir en guerre, oui, je partirai en guerre. Donc on est des professionnels et euh, je ne peux pas me poser des questions, je ne peux pas dire que si jamais j'aurai en guerre, un conflit, je ne pourrais pas faire face. Et déjà, je regarde autour de moi, je vois toutes ces, ces légionnaires et je peux dire que voilà, je suis prêt. Je vais aller n'importe quelle mission et 
fer n-apăr te kemisiu. De la genul ate fas al objectiv. Legionnaires have joined the Legion voluntarily. It has been their choice to live under the strict codes and customs of the Legion. They have to obey orders and must go to war and risk their lives. La guerre c'est c'est emmène une guerre partout. Que ça soit à l'école, en lutte pour pouvoir réussir, que ça soit dans notre quartier, que que ça soit dans dans les dans le ghetto ou autre, la guerre elle est partout. Donc euh, Afghanistan quand ils ont besoin de nous, eh ben on ira leur prêter main forte. Donc euh, c'est c'est la guerre elle est partout. Oui, j'irai. In Djibouti, Africa, it's an early morning for the legionnaires. The morning whistle goes at 4.45. The temperature seldom falls below 25 degrees Celsius at night and during the day it can often reach over 45 degrees. Because of this intense heat, the legionnaires start their day early to finish by the afternoon, when the baking sun becomes unbearable. Of the legion's 10 regiments, three are permanently based outside of France. One detachment is deployed in Mayotte, the 3rd Infantry is based in French Guiana, and the 13th Half Brigade has been stationed in Djibouti since 1982. The regiment consists of 800 men. Djibouti borders Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia, and is situated on Africa's Horn by the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, with the Arabian Peninsula on the other side. Previously under French rule, it gained its independence in 1977 but France still maintains a military presence there, along with American and Dutch forces, because it has great strategic importance as it guards the entrance to the Suez Canal. And from here, troops can easily be deployed to any trouble spots in the Middle East or Central Africa. A paratroop regiment have a distinct tactical advantage. They can be positioned behind enemy lines or placed into areas not accessible by land. A huge fighting force can fall out of the sky and land within minutes, changing the course of battles and wars. They can create a vertical envelopment of any conflict situation. Sergeant Chef Wagner makes a final check on the soldiers' parachutes. In the strict procedures leading up to the jump, the paratroopers are not able to check their parachutes themselves. In the air, there is no time for mistakes. Everything must go like clockwork. The instructor makes a final check on the soldier's parachutes. The smallest mistake by the instructor would see the paratrooper plummet to his certain death. This final inspection is crucial to the survival of the legionnaire.
The Legionnaire must be completely focused before his parachute jump. He must find time on the aircraft to collect his thoughts before jumping out of the plane. His preparation must be perfect if he is to land safely. Each Legionnaire knows that the landing is vital. The smallest mistake could lead to serious injury or possibly death. The Legion's 2nd Parachute Regiment is today one of the most respected military units in the world. But their history had a grueling start. Indochina had been part of the French colonial empire since 1887. But in 1946, a decisive war broke out between France and the Viet Minh, fighting for Vietnam's independence. This war was going to extinguish the torch of the French colonial empire forever. In 1954, the war came to its final confrontation at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. The French general Navarre pinpointed the area of Dien Bien Phu, deep in the hills of Vietnam, as a strategically vital area to win the war against the Viet Minh. The general decided to set up a heavily fortified camp here, but its safety was completely dependent upon air support. This decision was a huge mistake. General Navarre had underestimated the Viet Minh. They had surrounded the valley with 50,000 men and totally outnumbered the 16,000 French soldiers. Essentially, the French army was in a hole with an aggressive enemy attacking from the surrounding high ground. Thousands of French soldiers were flown in and dropped into the valley. The second parachute regiment of the French Foreign Legion was nearly annihilated at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Only a few survived. Joaquim da Silva, originally from Portugal, was 25 years old in 1954. He had joined the Legion two years earlier and was serving in the Parachute Regiment when the Indochina War reached its climax. When he jumped out over Dien Bien Phu, he knew he was jumping into hell. I was a volunteer on Dien Bien Phu. After I was four months of captivity. The Viet Minh captured over 11,000 prisoners and made them walk over 400 kilometers to prison camps in the north of the vanquished country. The French prisoners were starved and beaten. Only 3,000 survived to return to France. Joaquim da Silva was one of the lucky ones. How long were you in prison? Four months. Four months. And many, 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 they were there. We were young, the original. 20, 35 years. Normally, we could talk to women. But no, we could talk to women. We could eat. When we came out, we could eat this, we could eat this, we could eat this, we could eat this. The battle at Dien Bien Phu was the first time a European colonial empire had been overthrown by its former colony.
Ouais, ça va bien, très bien. C'est fini, hein. une fois qu'on a touché le sol, c'est bien. C'est un autre qui va revenir là. On dirait une minute, euh, une minute trente, une minute quarante. Après on descend. On est là. On est touché un peu avec un collègue. Mais après j'ai pris le. J'ai pris la traction qui va avec. J'ai dégagé un peu. Parce qu'on a des opérations à respecter. Si c'est respecté, ça se passe très bien. Les consignes, quand c'est respecté, ça se passe bien à la descente. Sauf s'il y a du vent. S'il y a du vent, pff, après, bam. Sinon, c'est bon. La nature, des fois, c'est différent. Mais sinon, bien. Today, one legionnaire has mistimed his jump and crashed to the ground. Là, donc, c'est un personnel qui est tombé assez fort sur le sol. Ok, donc je disais que c'est assez rare qu'il y ait des accidents comme ça. En général, c'est une cheville qui est tordue ou des petites blessures, un genou, d'accord. Mais on l'évacue tout de suite. Il monte dans l'ambulance et on l'évacue. En général, une semaine, deux semaines après, en général, il est sur pied. Là, a priori, c'est un cas un peu plus grave. Mais on, on verra euh, tout à l'heure euh, quand le médecin aura parlé. Non, il n'y a pas de paresthésie, il n'y a pas de, euh, de douleur au niveau des jambes. Dès que je touche le pied, il le sent, il peut bouger les orteils. Mais d'un principe de précaution, on ne le bougera pas. On le mettra dans la coquille et après on l'amènera à l'hôpital. Il fera la radio et on verra si oui ou non il y a une lésion au niveau du dos. Voilà, donc là je lui ai passé juste pour qu'il puisse être calmé un peu. J'attends un reliquat de matériel et après je vais l'envoyer sur l'hôpital. Mais ça semble pas très, pas très important. Attention pour poser Posez ah. Luckily, today, the injury is not too serious. A legionnaire must always be ready, be prepared to fight. A call could come at any moment, and these brave men could find themselves on the streets of Afghanistan or the desert wastelands of West Africa. They're prepared to fight to the death for the freedoms that we so readily accept. Being a legionnaire means being ready for war. The legion is in the front line of conflicts. They are the first in and last out. For legionnaires, combat is a part of their everyday life, and they have learned to live with a sanguine view on war. Today is a big day in the 2nd Foreign Infantry Regiment. General Pichot de Chamfleury is paying a special visit to the regiment in Nîmes. He's come to motivate his soldiers in the build-up to the celebrations of the greatest moment of the Legion's history, the legendary Battle of Cameroon. avril, tous les régiments de légion étrangère et toutes les amicales d'anciens légionnaires implantés dans le monde célébreront dans le même état d'esprit 
suivant le même cérémonial, le 144e anniversaire du combat de Cameroun. It was in Mexico on the 30th of April, 1863, that the Legion made its reputation as a home for heroes. A small company of only 65 men, led by Captain Donjou, was attacked by a 2,000-strong Mexican army at the Hacienda of Cameroon. Despite being totally outnumbered, the Legionnaires refused to lay down their arms. In a heroic battle, they killed and wounded 600 Mexican soldiers. Captain Donjou was slain, but the company fought to the bitter end. The last five Legionnaires mounted a bayonet charge against the Mexican forces. And when the final two Legionnaires were captured, they still refused to capitulate, demanding safe passage home, to be allowed to keep their flag, and to repatriate the body of their leader, Captain Donjou. The exasperated Mexican commander, Colonel Milan, said of these Legionnaires, these are not men, they are devils, and out of respect for them, he agreed. So the legend of the Legion was born. The values that carry the Legion of the Étranger in 2007 have not changed and have not taken the ride. It's the cult of the mission accomplished, and I remember Article 6 of our Code of Honor, the mission is sacred, you execute it to the end, and if you do it in operation, you are at risk of your life. Deuxième chose, c'est la fidélité. La fidélité à vos chefs, et je vous rappelle que sur nos drapeaux de cet endard est marquée la devise honneur et fidélité. But not everyone is allowed to take part in the parade. Corporal Fonseca is in jail. Je paye, je paye mon banane. Comme on dit à la Légion, voilà. Je paye mon, mon banane. Fonseca was a student at university in his homeland of Peru before joining the Legion. He's continued to be a good student, and he's now a corporal. Bon, ici à la Légion, je je me réveille bien d'être sous-officier. Sous-officier à la Légion, c'est c'est une chose qui a je pense qu'il y a tout le monde qui cherche. Un sous-officier à la Légion, c'est c'est un mec qui un homme qui est respecté. But with the jail sentence, those dreams could lie in tatters. The Legion imprisons any soldier who breaks their strict codes of order and discipline. During five years, uh, there are a certain number of things they are not authorized to, authorized to do. For instance, during five years, they have to leave uh, in the company. They are not allowed to, to have uh, an account in the bank. They are not allowed also to, to buy a car. Yes, you what you Et bon, il euh, y a quelqu'un qui m'a vu, euh, m'en fait, voilà. J'ai acheté mon nom, voilà. Et voilà, j'étais quelqu'un qui m'a vu. Et voilà, et, voilà ils, sont, ils, sont, ils sont su que j'avais une voiture. Et c'est contre le règlement, voilà. For the case of uh, Capoal Français Capipa, uh, which is four years and uh, two months of uh, engagement, uh, he was taken with a car and he is not five years yet. So he has not, he is not allowed to get his car, so he has to, to pay for having uh, broken the rules. He knew that, uh, he, knew that he, were, he were not allowed to do this, and someone saw him, and uh, so we had to punish him. In the Legion, being in jail means that you are completely isolated from the rest of your company. You were detained in the Legion's own jail platoon and given special duties, such as gardening. Okay. <laughs> so while Fonseca languishes in jail, his fellow legionnaires are greeting the general.
In the build-up to Cameroon Day, an inter-regimental sports competition is held. The fiercely proud and competitive legionnaires will have to push themselves to exhaustion in the hope of winning the highly prized championship for their company. Et donc euh, aujourd'hui l'épreuve c'est le rallye section. Donc euh, la compagnie a deux équipes, dont une équipe Fagnon. Le but pour cette équipe c'est d'effectuer un parcours avec des obstacles variés, faire un parcours d'obstacles euh, en sens inverse avec euh, donc, euh, musette, l'armement au casque. Ensuite il y aura euh, un brancardage dans les escaliers d'une compagnie et à l'issue ils descendront par une fenêtre de la compagnie en rappel. Et ça sera la, la fin du rallye. The games are designed to test the Legionnaire's strength, speed and stamina. They include running 300 meters carrying a 40 kilogram sandbag on their backs, or running as fast and as far as they can in 12 minutes. There's the difficult obstacle course to be crossed, which the quickest Legionnaire can do in three minutes. For a company, to win the challenges, whether it's from Cameroon, from Noël or from Mungar, it's an objective very important. C'est quelque chose de très bien pour l'ambiance d'une compagnie. Et pour les jeunes c'est l'occasion de se mesurer entre eux. Euh, les jeunes aiment l'effort physique, ils aiment se dépasser. Donc euh, là, aujourd'hui, ils en ont l'occasion. Toi des bras pour équilibrer Allez, toi des bras pour équilibrer Prenez votre... And all this happens under the watchful gaze of the general, the father of the legion. He's, uh, he's done uh, tout ce qu'il peut et uh, pour arriver premier du régiment. Et uh, c'est là qu'on voit vraiment les gars qui sont sportifs et ceux qui ont ça dans dans, dans le cœur. C'est Cameron. Voilà. It's a special occasion when the general observes his troops, and each soldier will be looking to impress him. He's searching only for the fittest and toughest legionnaires. To them will go the great honor of guard duty on Cameroon Day. General Pichot de Champfleury is simply the father of the Legion. C'est vrai que le paradoxe apparent de la Légion étrangère, c'est comment on fait vivre, combattre et mourir ensemble des gens qui, à l'extérieur de notre système, se battent, se font la guerre, se disputent, etc. C'est que d'abord ces gens qui viennent d'horizons très divers, il faut leur donner un projet commun. Il faut leur donner une utilité et un objectif. Il faut, et c'est le service des armes de la France, et au travers des armes de la France, c'est le service de, de la paix dans le monde. Deuxième chose, il faut leur donner des règles communes. Et nous avons à la Légion étrangère un code d'honneur euh, que tout le monde porte sur soi, à cet article, qui explique qu'à la Légion étrangère, il n'y a pas de religion, il n'y a pas de race, etc. Et puis enfin, 
La, la troisième chose, il faut qu'ils sentent, qu'ils se sentent dans une famille chez nous. Je ne suis pas un chef d'entreprise, je suis un chef de famille avec 7550 enfants. Voilà, regarde bien devant, tu regardes devant. C'est vrai qu'on a la réputation de prendre des gens qui avaient des problèmes dans leur vie antérieure. Et c'est voir non pas le côté négatif des gens, mais le côté positif de chaque individu. Et quand on tend la main à quelqu'un qui a été un peu dans l'embarras avant, quand on lui propose un projet, il a une adhésion et il a une fidélité extraordinaire. It's the morning of the 30th of April, and the 3rd Company of the 2nd Foreign Infantry Regiment in Nîmes is getting ready for an eventful Cameroon Day, the most important day in a Legionnaire's year. Throughout the years, the Legion has celebrated Cameroon Day on the 30th of April, in remembrance of the heroic battle in Mexico in 1863. Cameroon Day is not only special for the Legionnaires, but also for their friends and family. It's the only day in the year when the Legion is open to the public, and it's a rare opportunity for loved ones to see inside the secret world of the Legion. For Captain Coutance, it's important that his company shows itself from its best side. Everything must be perfect. <laughs> there is no really, there is no many medals, but uh, it's not necessary medals, which is important. It is the spirit. When you make. Little things very good, uh, very precisely. You make uh, huge things in the same way, precisely, beautiful and so on. And so you go fighting uh, with a with a witty and a strong troop. It was one May morning in 1987 that Robenheimer, then 18 years old, bought a one-way ticket from England to France to join the Foreign Legion. As Robenheimer's career draws to a close, he's proud to have carried on the great traditions and principles of the Legion. The principles drawn up by King Louis Philippe in 1831, but forged by the blood of brave Legionnaires at Dien Phu, at Narvik, and at Cameroon. The Last Cameroon. Um, that would make a good title for a film, wouldn't it? The Last Cameroon, you know, I think, is the one before you die, basically. And not necessary. If you, if you die doing a, uh, as we say, en uh, faisant Cameroon, doing Cameroon, then that would be ideal. It doesn't feel like the last Cameroon to me, not at all. Although I am leaving the Legion. Having spent 20 years in the Legion and 20 years in a combat platoon. Um, well, when, when you're a Legionnaire, you're only responsible for yourself. Suddenly, you're no longer responsible for a group of men. That's, a, that's quite a big change. Um, it sort of feels strange to not uh, sort of wake up in the morning and not worry about uh, has someone deserted, is someone sick, is someone not happy as someone um, I've got a plan for this, got to prepare that. So now, um, no longer having the responsibility for men is quite, that's quite, a, quite a big change, but that's uh, temporary because I'll probably be taking responsibility for people in the future. The aim of any platoon leader is to, to be sure that if you did have to ask your men to fight to the last, they would. Um, so that, I think that requires some, some skill in man management, and I think I, I think I could have asked that from my men. I think they would have done it for me if I'd asked them. Uh, you can't manage men pretending to be something you're not. You have to use the skills that you actually have. 
the qualities that you actually have. Um, and I managed to, I succeeded in managing men fairly well for for several years now. So the qualities that I do have seem to be fairly good. Il me faut des agrafos comme ça. Ah comme ça? Comme ça. Ça non. T'as pas des agrafos bon là-dedans? To carry the flag on Cameroon Day is one of the biggest honours in the Legion. The honour is usually given to the lieutenant whom the colonel has marked for promotion to captain. This year, it's a clear confirmation that Ryu will be promoted to captain. Ryu trained at the same military academy as the legendary Captain Donju of Cameroon, the prestigious Sancir. In the years to come, he will lead his men, his legionnaires, in training and in battle, and carry forward the proud traditions and spirit of Captain Donju, Cameroon, and the Legion. After the Cameroon battle, a Mexican soldier stole the wooden hand of Captain Donju. The captain had had a prosthetic limb since losing his hand in combat in Algiers in 1853. The wooden hand was later retrieved and given to the Legion. Each year on Cameroon Day, this hand of Captain Donju is paraded in front of the Legionnaires in remembrance of their fallen brothers. While Ryu's star is on the rise, the sun begins to set on Robenheimer's career in the Legion. And Robenheimer knows he will never again, no matter what path he chooses to tread, have such brotherhood, such friendship, such family as in the Legion. As the Legion looks back on its history, what about its future? One thing is certain. So long as there is war, there will always be a need for the French Foreign Legion, for Legionnaires, for men who prove themselves tougher than the rest. <laughs>